Hello out there. It's gonna be a great night for astronomy, I guess. The sky is blue and there's no wind at all. And I thought to myself, why not make a run-through video of how I set up my telescope? So here it is. This is my LX90 from Mead. It's a 10 inch Smith Cassegrain telescope. Maybe you can't see it on this video, but just above the chimney, far, far away, there is an antenna. It's situated about two miles from here, and I use it to align my guide scope with my main telescope. And now when the telescope is roughly aligned to the antenna in the background, I will go get my gyroscope. Now my gyroscope is firmly attached to my telescope and the next thing is my main camera. camera connected and now it's time to get the dew heater. Remark, I have not taken away the covers yet. The dew heater is on and now I remove my caps. Why until now? Because I want to keep sure that I don't do scratches on the surfaces. And now it's time for all the cables, the power for the dew heater, the cables for the cameras, and a cable to connect to the mount. Now, when all equipment is attached to the telescope, it's time to balance the telescope. It's very important that the telescope is in balance on both axes, or else the motors will struggle too much to keep in line. That's a balance. Now the telescope is balanced, the equipment is attached, and now it's time for using the computer. I use SharpCap Pro 3.2 as my capturing software. And the reason I have chosen the Pro version is because it's got polar alignment, and that is essential later on. Now I will connect to the camera on my guide scope. Notice that small antenna on the left side of the screen? Well, that is the antenna two miles away from here. That is the antenna I will use for aligning. I power on my telescope, but I skip all the alignment procedures. And now, as I got the tip of the antenna in the center of my screen, I will turn to my main camera. And using the same procedure, I will align the tip of the antenna on my main camera. And now, the tip of the antenna is roughly aligned in the center on my main camera. And why this switch from guide scope to main camera? Well, mainly because in the guide scope, the viewer field is larger and it's easier to put the antenna inside the field of view with that done first. Now we have to recenter the guide camera. But this time we won't use the controls on the telescope to move the guide scope. Now we will use the knobs 
on the guide scope to center the tip of the antenna again. This way the telescope and the guide scope is perfectly aligned on the same object in the sky. Xiaokath is now showing the image from my guide scope and using the knobs on the guide scope I will recenter the tip of the antenna. And that's it. The tip of the antenna is now in the center of the screen and so it is with the main camera. So the two telescopes are perfectly aligned. And now finally it's time to prepare the telescope for polar alignment. The telescope has to go in its polar home position. First thing I want to do is to keep these two arms totally level to the ground. And I personally use a bubble level. Just put it on the fog arms, let it rest, and turn the telescope slowly so that the bubble is centered. Then I make sure that the right ascension marker is aligned. And now for the tube itself. It has to point straight up so that the fog arms and the tube is like one straight line. So now the fog arms and the tube should perform one straight line up into space pointing roughly at the Polaris. And why do I need to have this straight up? Well, it has to be a perfect line or else your guiding will not work later. And how do I make sure that it's one straight line? Well, I use my mobile phone. On this I got an app called Precise Level. I will put the precise level on the base and measure out the angle it is standing in. Right now it's 54.3. Next off, well, put it on the scope. Make sure it's level. So now we got the telescope balanced, we got all of the things attached, we got aligned the guide scope with the telescope, and we got the foregrounds leveled to the ground and the telescope pointing straight up from the base. Now it's only to wait until it gets dark and we can start the polar alignment. Well, the darkness has come, the sun has set, and it's time to polar align. Now, Keep in mind that before the night went on, before the darkness came, we made sure that the telescope is in perfect polar home position by making sure the tube is straight up from the forearms and that the two forearms are level with the ground. We are using SharpCap to polar align and it's SharpCap 3.2, the pro version, because that got the polar alignment. So I connect my camera from the guide scope, not from the main scope, from, from the guide scope because the view of field in the, guide, in the main scope is too small for a polar alignment. So here are the stars and I go to tools and polar align and we press next. Now it's solving to find out where the, the telescope is pointing and it's solved it already and I have to press next before I rotate the RA axis on the telescope and I'm not having the telescope turned on, it's still off. And so now with my telescope still turned off, I will rotate the RA axis and I'm rotating it about 90 degrees. After I've been rotating the RA axis about 90 degrees, Polar alignment has made new calculations and before I do anything, I remember to press next. Now it's time to use the knobs on the telescope, not the hand controller. The knobs on the telescope to make that point over there go to that point over there. Sharpcap is telling me I have to move my telescope two minutes to the left. So I turn this knob on the right side to turn it to the left. 
ever so slightly, I just move the telescope a tad and I wait for the next calculation. That was overdoing it. Now I have to turn the telescope to the right. And again, let me stress, this telescope is not turned on. It's still off. We use this knob to turn it on. And again, I overdone it a little bit, so I have to turn the knob down. And we're waiting for the next picture. I've set the exposure time for eight seconds. That works very good for me. Now we are good for going on astrophotography. Look at that. I'm 11 seconds and seven seconds off. Now it's 10 and four. Do not hunt those seconds. They are not necessary. The guy scope is on. The polar alignment is good. So what's to do now? Well, I have to re-put my telescope in the polar polar align home position by zeroing it down here and then we are good to go to do a two star alignment. Remember earlier on I reset the marker to 12. I know that's my polar home position, that's zero. So when I set it here, there, I am ready to do a two star alignment. The telescope is now pointed at its first star and recall that we did an alignment of the guide scope with the telescope. Well, look at this. I will go to my guide camera. And there's the first star that I have to center. So, I turn on the crosshair again and once more we will use the hand controller now, the hand controller, to make that star go there. Now, by using the hand controller, by ever so slightly small touches, I've made the star go dead center in the cross, and I can go for my second alignment star. The second alignment star has now been found, and we are good to go now to do some photos. In a minute, we have to do a focus. The best way to focus, I find, is using a bath enough mask. This is a DIY, but it works. Put it in front of the telescope. And remember to put it off before you photograph. Have a look at this star. It has lines from it. It's because of the bath enough mask. The line in the center has to be dead center between the two other lines and you do that by using the focus knob on your telescope. By turning the focus knob ever so lightly, I have managed to make the line perfect in center between the two other lines. I am in perfect focus and ready now for photographing. Hi again, so we have gone inside now to what we could call a warm room. This is my garage, and right outside that window, the telescope stands. We are now ready to remotely control the telescope from within here, and this is cozy. Now, I have told my telescope to go to the Sombrero Galaxy, but I know the go-tos on those telescopes, they are not that accurate. So, we get a help from APT, Astrophotography Tool. I will not get into how I set it up or how you should set it up. There are tons of videos about that out there. This is just a video of my run through of how I do my setups. I have already connected my camera and my telescope. Now I will do a five second exposure uh, with my camera to see if it sees started. everything. Exposure finished. Exposure finished and well, there you have it. I, I can actually see the Sombrero Galaxy within the uh, within the area, but I can also see the focus is off, and that's because the LX90 has a mirror flop. I have to do a refocus. So I've done a refocus, and I've just realized that the Sombrero ga Galaxy is very low on the horizon, so a focus is almost impossible, and. Furthermore, it, the stars are behind a tree, so now you can see they are making diffractions 
just like when I use the Bassinoff mask. But anyhow, you can see the Sombrero Galaxy just whimpering down here. And you can now go to your gear and you can go to point craft, get the uh, settings from the telescope, the coordinates, and then you can go to objects down here. In this case, M104, this is, this is uh, the Sombrero Galaxy. I will use that as a guideline and I press this go to. Now the software will take a picture and it will move the telescope so that the Sombrero Galaxy will stay put in center. This is called plate solving. So I gave up on the Sombrero Galaxy and turned to the Whirlpool Galaxy M51 instead. I've taken a five second exposure and I can see the Whirlpool Galaxy right here. But now I will go to Pinecraft and make it go dead center. Again, I get the coordinates from the telescope. I choose an object, M51, and we will get, say go to. Now it's going to plate solve for me. So now it's taken a couple of uh, exposures, and as you can see, the Whirlpool Galaxy is almost dead center. I'm happy and pleased, and now. It's actually time for having all the fun, making photographs. I almost forgot, of course I've turned on my PhD2 auto guiding and it's auto guiding right now. So I'm good and ready to make in photographs. Have your hunting and clear skies out there.